Hello, Mark Savage here. Gloves are on. Welcome to my channel, Moped Time. Peugeot Speed Fight. It has been so long, really, since I played one of these. Now, fellow YouTuber had this, watched my channel. He changed the pistol in the head. Also put six grand rollers in. Yay. Um, started first time every time. Now, I had a big feeling that after a few days leaving this alone, it wasn't going to start. So my job today was going to be stripping it all down. Now, I started over four years ago doing YouTube, but I've been doing bikes a lot, lot, lot longer than that. And I was doing three, ten of these a week, you know, really. Um, and I started videoing me doing the bikes. Um, and it was simple, I was fixing the bikes and I was holding the camera, my little phone, and I was just videoing. That's why some of them aren't as good a quality as they can be, and I've got better as I've gone along. But realistically, I was doing it because I know when you went to a shop and you said to the guy, my bike don't work, and you paid £500 for it, your mum and dad had paid for insurance for it, and everything else, helmet, gloves, £1,000. You went to the garage because whether it was crap in the first place or you forgot to put oil in it or you've been flogging it to death, they look at you and go, 150 to 300 pounds. And you ain't got that sort of cash. So the bike shops got fed up doing it. So they just sent a fictitious figure, 500 quid, go away. Because they didn't want you there. Because they know that you thought it was just going to be 25 pounds. And it never was. So loads of these ended up for sale, broken, bits and bobs, and I was buying them. Stripping them down and having a bit of fun with them. Cup of tea. Now, it did all start because I got four kids, had a load of bikes in the garden, and I got fed up paying 300 quid each time. So, hopefully, my videos have been a big help. But that's where I started originally from, just holding the camera. As I've gone on, you've noticed more that I'm doing a video with the bike for the camera, not the other way around anymore. So, I've got better camera views. So, I thought today, I would like you to watch this video and be with me while I do it. So when I'm doing the carburetor, I'm going to show you how to take the carburetor off. What you do with a carburetor with proper cleaning products, not WD-40 and all the dull things I get asked, can I use this? The seat bucket, the key's gone. I'm going to actually show you, I'm going to get all the panels off and do it slowly so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to look at ignition as well, it jams in there. Now, does this start after two days of being left? So we see. Key is just a bit wiggly I'm not happy with that at all I mean it's the right key there we go remember I pull the brake in this one doesn't work so it's the micro switch on this side I'll show you that as well pull in and now we've got nothing just a click now it wasn't doing it earlier it didn't even turn over now it's not even turning over now click noise means that all the powers there to start are not working so this bike needs lots of work but I've always said in my videos, get this panel off, get the battery off, and get it on charge. Also, the kickstart don't work on this, and I've done a video. Everything I'm going to talk about today, I have done a video of. You need to type in Mark Savage kickstart, Mark Savage starter, Mark Savage front end twisted, Mark Savage blah, 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 and you'll find the video. Please don't just watch two videos barrage me with questions that are on there. And if you do ask questions, we don't mind, explain more. Don't just say the bike isn't running, because then I'll find out you put a 70 kit, which you know I hate. Or you've took the air filter off, or you tried to clean the car bro, or you've upjetted it by 10. You miss all them bits out. Here's a simple philosophy. If the bike was running, you've messed with it, now it's not running, put it back to what it was. It'll run again. Have a go at that. Right, enough blabbing. Now it don't start at all. I need to take everything off apart and have a look and see what goes on. Stay with me. If you don't like moped videos, skip this one. Let's get on with it. Strange. I need to get this bucket out, the seat bucket. Three bolts. One, two, three. And yes, it's missing this little cover. And here's one I made earlier. Pop it in, and there we go. It does go down, honestly. Anyway, let's get this seat bucket out. Put in this little glove box, yeah. And then just wiggle, wiggle, and out it comes. 
Now you have access to everything you need. Now I'm going to take off everything. The backlight isn't supposed to sit like that at all. Um, yeah, right. Head, spark plug. And down there is a little bit of a bronze shiny bit. You can see that. That's a starter motor. You get into it from this side. Two 8mm bolts. This is excessive. Remember, green is earth. Green. Okay? Always remember that. We're doing the battery. Green is earth. And I always use this little power pack. And the battery always on charge. So, just started. Backlight's knackered. Starter's not working. Didn't turn over anyway. Well, I lie. It turned over, wouldn't start. So, I have to investigate. Hoping I haven't got to take the head off. But it is air cooled. And being air cooled, few bolts, four off the top. If you can get to it, it's well worth doing. But I'm going to tackle this side first. Carburetor's going to come off and everything else. Stay with me. Do, 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 do. You may as well just take every. You may find that people use all sorts of bolts in here. One, two. He sprayed them all up, which he did. Mm. The back light isn't supposed to be taped onto there. It's supposed to fit onto the back there. And uh, the actual light itself, he just hasn't done it. Here and here, is where the back light supposed to screen to. It just didn't do it. And the bulb is not supposed to do that. Well, no. So this is all just a bit cocked up. Anyway, at least that will fit back on there with a back light that's not smashed. So, suck away part one. Although this one has got a small crack on it, better than the other one did. One small little bit missing there. So two screws, two screws, like that. Has got a snake lock on it, but no key, which is really common. I'll be able to get to the carburetor easier once I take that off. Ah. Well, there's supposed to be a bolt that goes in there. So that's a bit crap. Now something I noticed, can you see that? That is why it's not starting properly. That has to go on there tight. It's a vacuum. If the vacuum's not, not connected properly, it just means you're sucking in air. So that is a pile of crap. And although we screwed that one on there, it's still a fuel one. He paid attention to, but that's just way, way too big. I suppose what I'm saying is, look at the gauge. You can see that, can't you? Now, I bet if I squeeze that enough, I'll probably get it in there. This fits on nice and tight, that doesn't. I'll well, keep them. We know where this is going, don't we? Now, if someone had asked me a couple of questions about the bike's not starting, I would have said, take your carburetor off, sort your carburetor out, check the spark, blah, blah, blah. I would never have seen that you're using too big a fuel line, an airline, which meant that although you may get it started, a couple of minutes later, there's no vacuum, won't suck the fuel through properly, a day later, won't start, you're back to all again. Suck the petrol through, it'll start, it gets vacuum going, and etc. Something as small as that, I can't see that. You're not telling me, okay? So, I reckon that if I suck the petrol through now and put two better fuel lines on, this baby would start. But you say, go on in, Marky, pull it to the test. So, two proper size fuel cables. I'm gonna put one in the fuel, one in the air, suck the petrol through, connect it, we'll see if it starts. I mean, it won't, will it? Because the, the electric start's not working. Because we've got this. It would have worked. 
So, okay, I'm going to connect these anyway. Let's look at the starter motor as well, shall we? I'm getting a bit carried away with myself thinking it was it was working, which it's clearly not. But this would have started, but I'm going to take the carburetor off and clean it anyway. There's two new fuel lines. Carburetor, already half off. This here is really, really important, okay? This is your oil, and you can see a bit of oil in there. That's really important and must make sure that's connected or your bike will seize, 100%. This is the needle. This is for fine tuning if you need to adjust this at all, which very often you don't. Now this needle here can go up and down a little bit. It's on like a pin that you can get out through that side and change it. But, and when you've got real problems, just drop it down there nicely. And then you got the carburetor, 8 mil, 8 mil, and off. Here is the reeds, okay? Now, if you look here, that is your air petrol mix screw. And on this bike here, you cannot adjust it. Often people take that out, there's a bung they can get out, or they cut it in the middle and adjust it anyway. On this one, if it doesn't work well, I'm going to have to get that pin out, because there's no other way of adjusting the carb. Little buggers, really, aren't they? Said, this is just 8 mil. Now, if I hadn't have taken the panels off, I'd be now whacking myself on this panel that's here. It wouldn't work very well. This is just the right thing to do. Do not over tighten these. You need to get them tight. If you defred these in the carburetor, because it's only like cheap metal, if Ali, you're going to cause yourself a world of pain. Oh, I haven't said that for a long time. Now, do not lose that. This is just important you can't buy these anywhere okay it's a bit battered but the main thing this round circle bit here seals really good if you don't have that don't rely on this pathetic little seal here won't work and I've tried doing these at Keller's cornflake packets and everything else they are gold dust nice and simple open the shed door let's get rid of the petrol in here doesn't look very clean. Very, very orangey to be honest with you. Hmm. Very orange. Makes me worry that you might even have really old fuel in here. Time to suck it out in a minute, I reckon. Right. Phillips screwdriver for them too. Do not round them. Don't get a crappy screwdriver in there. Make sure you get one that really fits nicely. Okay, like this one, if it turns round, you're gonna round them and then you've got to drill them out and oh not good. So I'm saying about not rounding them, I'm gonna bloody round them. Oh flip me, that's one. Be very careful and don't lose them. What the hell? It was a big chat, but bloody hell. Oh, well, that wasn't fun. Bye. Not too bad. Possibly done it before. Here we have the float system in the carburetor. It goes in here, straight from the vacuum system, so bike starts, sucks, petrol goes in here, and it's stopped just at the back here. So that petrol out, petrol in, petrol out, petrol in. These can stick up, which means you don't get fuel. They can stick down, which means you're flooding your bike. Now, flooding your bike gives the same sort of result as not enough fuel. It will splatter, but it's a richer smell. But at the end of the day, the result is still the same. Your bike will not run. So when I say check your float, what I do, as you get a little bit of pipe, I pop it on there, I get the other side of the mouth, and I blow. Now, here we go. Let's turn the mood down quickly. Can you hear that? Ready? I know that that float working perfectly. 
when I blew through, which is imagine it's petrol, it's coming out, and when the fuel stopped, it pushed it up here when it's full, it stopped the air through. So I can successfully say that's fine. Don't touch that. But that is your main jet and idle jet. Let's get them out, blow them through with carburetor cleaner. Not WD-40, not disc cleaner and the merits of other ones. Soak it in petrol. It's in petrol already. Why are you soaking in more petrol? Need to get rid of it all. Clean it all, spray it all up. Be careful, do not lose anything. I have done it many times before on the carpet and it's not done well at all. Nice flat screwdriver, take it in there. Now, standard jet. Standard jet is 53, 54, up to 56 standard. Normally it's 54, I've seen all sorts. This, that little jet there, is not a standard speed fight jet, I can tell straight away, because they're not that long for the actual thread. Very, very hard to see, but they're not that long. So this has been played with. I would have said, it's probably a 60 or something. Bloody eye. Right. Don't get old, will ya? Only 50 years old, my eyesight's gone. Look away. So it's a 10 up from the original. The exhaust and the little extra bit on the air filter has been taken off. So this is quite happy. Remember, that's the air box and this actually fits on there. Smothering more air. About this, get a bit more air in there. And often, oh, you can't see that I can. In there is a red air filter, so it's got sports in air filter. That's what I suggest. Dirty? Nah. Save some money? They're washable. Don't tell your other half. I mean, slap me back in the head. Don't tell your mum, if you're a kid. Wash up liquid in the old bowl. Wash it up. Rinse it, rinse it, rinse it, rinse it nice and clean. Let it dry. Do not put it straight back in the bike. You're sucking moisture in the bike. Bad. Simples. So we're gonna wash that air filter. We're gonna spray this through. Carb cleaner. It doesn't matter if it's a cheap one. Carb cleaner. One pound, one pound fifty, about ten quid. It's not the point. I always use this one cheaply around the outside to clean it, and this one to clean it properly. And it's simple. It's got a straw with it, pop it on there, spray it. Don't get this bloody stuff in your eyes. Oh my god, I've said it so many times before, don't do it. We're gonna clean that. We're gonna take that one out, clean that, spray it all, spray it in here, all in there, all in there. I've done this so many times in so many videos, so this is just really to say how simple it is and hopefully I've explained it really well. And I'm putting the heading, carb, kickstart, starter. Hopefully this will be keywords for you to get them. Right, I'm gonna quickly spray that through as I've described, clean it all, put it back together again. I'm not gonna put it back on yet because I'm gonna get this side off to find out why the damn thing's not starting. So the carburetor is all clean. I've just fitted that back in there again. I took that out and sprayed there. Obviously, I couldn't get that one out at the time being. Here we have a nice carburetor all ready to go back on. And I'll fit that cable properly. So I take four bolts out and not the eight that should be in here. And this fell off. Belt, too fat. And though it will fit, you're going to lose pull away on this. Be sluggish. It's too fat. This isn't put on right, the bolt's too far out, so I've got to take this off and have a look at it anyway. Should be further back. Kickstart. That's the Bendix, this is what normally goes wrong, that's what I thought I was talking about. Actually, it's talking about this bit here. And that fits in like that there. But, that's, that's just shit. All this is just not right. Okay, it's not supposed to be fitting like that, it's, it's knackered. So that needs to come off and be reset properly. Done a video on this, but that's that's just no good. That will just that will just never work right. The spring's gone, and it hadn't got that in it anyway. But anyway, I had a look. The star motor is free and spinning, but it's not working, and it looks reasonably new. So I'm gonna have to check the electrics on that to see why it gave up the ghost. What I'm saying, you know, again, you just can't explain something when someone's done something just a little bit wrong. Why my bike won't get faster? 
It's just this belt being a little bit too fat, you know, than what it should be. I mean, it'll work all right, but you're not gonna get that wonderful pull away that you were hoping for, you know? Showing videos again how to test the clutch, which is supposed to be really quite stiff, but not over stiff. A new one, you have to wear in a little bit. I'm not impressed with that. So this is coming off, and let's look why this is so far over anyway. So, why wasn't it starting? And it's, you must have known this. You need one of these little voltmeters. Now, I pressed the button, and I could hear it clicking. So in my mind, that was working. But when I put a voltmeter, and I put a live to the starter motor, 0.1 volt. That's not right. I took this little box off, this is the relay, and I can see bluing all around it. So I rubbed it down, put some WD-40 there, and in there's the starter motor, and... Working! That wasn't difficult. But without the voltmeter, you wouldn't have known there's no volts going there, and it just took a little bit longer to find it. So there we go. Clean carburetor, worked out the fuel lines are too big, sucking in air, that's why it won't start after a while. Got the starter motor working. Now, variator system, get off. I've done many videos on that, but hey, I'm gonna get all that off, get it to what I want it to work with, clean it up. I might look at the kickstart. The kickstarts can be buggers. Now I've got a brand new one here, Brand new spring. See, this is why I say don't chuck nothing away. It's not behind me. <laughs> Watch the other video, you're not know talking about it. This is a brand new spring on here. I can connect all that up. And I can get the kickstart working. Don't know if I'll bother. If it's electric starting good enough, I don't know if it's worth doing. I'll tell you why. Because some bikes don't like electric start and you have to kickstart them. If this starts first time every time with electric start, might just leave it that way and then keep this one for another bike that won't electric start. We'll have to have a think on that one. Do I check whether he's got the head down properly and I'm gonna check spark plug. Ah, finding tacky things like this. Tell you what, I'm gonna check the spark plug, get on with other little bits, and if it runs and rides fine, I'll leave it. If it doesn't run to how I expect it to or want it to, then I'll check that. So there we go. This is what I keep saying. You've got to do it right. This bike is going to get the Savage going over, okay? Front's going to come off. We're going to sort the ignition out. We're going to check the bulbs here. The clock's going to come off so I can do the micro switch. You need to do the whole job properly. Don't just do one thing and it's all big deal. Spend the whole day in the garage, strip it down, get it back together again. You've got 100% bike you know going to go right. Your dad, like me, your child's on the road, you know you've checked that over. Watch my videos. They will, really will help you. Making sure that you don't get that call that you never want to receive. Dad, mum, whoever, I've broke down. 10 mile away from home, whatever, you know? And always make sure they've got oil topped up because these two teats, the main thing they forget to do is put two teat oil in them and then they quickly top back up and say, I don't know why it's seized. This was seized already, he's changed the head there. The more I'm finding little tacky bits wrong, the more I'm thinking I've got to go over it. I'm going to fast forward now unless I find something else that you need to see. I didn't get very far, did I? <laughs> I was going to potter in and probably have a cup of tea and finish off tomorrow. Let me show you. I was talking about the head. I thought, I'm just going to take the HT cap off. And I took that off and I thought, wait, what? Why, why is all this moving? Why, why? There's a bolt on the back. There's a bolt on the side here. What, why, why is it not done? This, this not being set in properly is not good. You need to have it bolted in. It's not going to blow up because of it. There's bolts that should be in there. It just means that, see, it's bolted the fan side on, but not connected that down. The bolt at the back's a bit bugger to get on, but you should have it on. There. That's where the bolt goes. Ugh. Clips through there, goes down. 8mm bolt. It needs to be down. It'll rattle, it'll do something, it's just wrong. Right, let's check the uh, sparky plug, see how she's been running. I've said this before to people, check the spark plug after you've had it running, and this will tell you whether you're running rich, running lean. What does that say to you? Absolutely bugger black. 
that's oil, petrol, that's just dung. Right now I'm worried what's in there, because that is not good. Clean rag. Main spark of your bike. Look at that. Look at that now. Do you know what oil he's got in there? Whether he's used quality oil or not. I've got to drain all the oil out now. Have him check the petrol, see what condition that's in. If you've got crap petrol in your bike, it's gonna run crap. If you've got cheap oil in your bike, it's just gonna damage what you want to work you've just done. When I did start her, huge plumes of smoke were coming out the back. Now that could be because if you keep trying to start your bike, oil still goes into your bike. Petrol will evaporate, but the oil won't. And it just sludges at the bottom. When you eventually get your bike started, huge plumes of smoke. So don't think your rings are gone. Can simply be you just chuck loads of oil in there, keep revving her, keep revving her, go for a ride and it'll clear up. If you keep getting the white smoke all the time, cheap oil, or your rings have gone. He said he just done this head. Now I've got to take the bloody head off and have a check of the piston, haven't I? Uh, did say I'd give it a savage going over, didn't I? <laughs> I'm going to regret saying that. The Savage Tricks. <laughs> okay. I was going to take the head off. And I accidentally still had this on tighten up. Okay. So the other one right, okay. That's what it should have been. I accidentally had it on tighten. Watch this. Head. One hand, remember. Head. These are head bolts. What does that mean then? It means the head wasn't down properly and gases could have been escaping out of the side. Bloody hell. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna take it up, but I just wanted to show you. I accidentally found that, because I went to undo it and did it up by mistake. So the head bolts are not down as tight as they should be. Forget all this manual part of 40 newton tons per blah blah. One hand, tight as you can get them, great. Don't give it your full force and a longer bar because you might shear the bolts. But I've always found it works for me and I've done it hundreds of bloody times before anybody starts preaching to me. I have all the manuals, I know. But I've done it again and again and again and again and again. The only time that I suppose you really should stick to the specs is on bigger bikes, most certainly, 100%, and when they're water-cooled, okay, because you need to get it down tight, or you're going to start leaking. But air-cooled engines, just one hand, tight, jolly good. Jolly good. That wasn't jolly good. Right, carry on. Sorry, this video. I could do a couple of free parts of this video, but do a mega long video, because you really enjoy them. And by watching this video, hopefully you can get your bike running as well. Okay, I've said I, uh, well. Well, I've just rubbed. This will, your belt will expand out to here. It's gonna rub it. It's just gonna, like an eraser on a piece of paper. It's gonna rub the belt down skinnier and skinnier. So the clutch would rub the belt down, this would rub the belt down, and what's gonna happen next to the belt? A snap. There's no K in snap, I know. So a little bit of emery cloth, sand down, rub it down till it's smooth. Carry on. Now that's all cleaned up. You can see that this is gonna go right on flat before it was out here somewhere. Okay? So when that goes on. It's now right the way back. So I know this nut will go further back than before. So something wasn't right in here. The possibility losing gases, not getting the vacuum, the rollers not rolling round, the belt not going small enough, pull away. Can you see what I'm saying? Lots of little things took two, three, four, five miles an hour off of this bike. This should really fly. Not need running in, just little tacky bits. 
but I'm still finding bits. I was going to leave it there, but I wanted to show you. You've got to rub them down, okay? I will just chew the belt and all the hard work you've done. A lot of people said to me before, you know, belts only last me two, three hundred miles. That's why. Clean it down, rub it down nice and smooth. Well, you've got to buy new ones of these then, have I? I call it a day. Remember, the bottom one here is the vacuum. The top one is for petrol. They're nice and tight. This one, pop in your mouth. <laughs> the other one, put in a pot. Stop. 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 Stop splashing petrol everywhere. That is how the vacuum works. And the petrol, little dribble, and will stop. It will not flood the carburetor. The petrol in here, actually is okay. So I'm going to cut these to the right length, not too tight, a little bit of a bow to them, and then uh, I'm going to pop the side on. Look. <laughs> oh, bless, look at that. That wasn't doing a very good job of letting air in. Um, just full of oil. That's completely wrong. And to try and get a bit more air in, he drilled two holes in the box. I think we'll uh, cover them inside. I could just do a video on every little thing. Um, there are about 10 videos on this, the little things that are wrong. Now, when I often say about micro switches when it won't start, if you ever get a bike um, that you pull the brake lever in and you don't get the starter, but you pull another brake lever and you do. This is the micro switch that I talk about that is on your brake lever. It sits there, just screws in very nicely. And these two, they're earths by the way, not live and negative, they're earths. They connect on to there, and then when the brake's gauged, it's like that, and when you pull the brake, it comes out, and that's all it does. Now, 295 all that's in there is copper and it's just these two are slides and literally copper in there and it pulls that way okay make circuit break circuit so it's actually like this so it connects every time you pull it they just go wrong the wd-40 sometimes i've took them apart before and cleaned them up so they're not unserviceable as it were a bit finicky of springs if you're not into springs flying out everywhere and so on don't do it you have to sort of reconnect and pop them out. However, that's what's wrong with this one. I had to spray it up. It wasn't working. I pulled it around a bit. And it just basically just, where they sit with the brake always in, they're just sort of, I don't know, a bit of coppering in there. You know, like I showed you on the uh, box. Well, you got to remember these, this is what, 16 years old, this bike. Looks new, but it could have been there for 16 years. You just don't know. So it's sitting there all the time like that. So I've sprayed it up, cleaned it up. And now, hopefully, I'll be able to uh, press on this side and we get it going. However, after I cleaned the carburetor, put the head down, done the plug, um, I've put a bit of tape over the air box where I had too much air coming in. So however, after cleaning the spark plug, tightening the head down, cleaning the carburetor, sorting out a few little other bits with the starting, and we can't use this brake lever yet because I'm still working on it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> There we go, a running bike. <laughs> switch it push in the middle. So there you go, I'm gonna sort this little micro switch out now that will uh, allow the back brake to touch. You know, these connectors do get a little bit funny, don't they? But she's running, she revs up. I've gotta see whether them six grand rollers are rolling or not. Um, I've gotta see if I rev her up and she seems to change up gear. Present minute, I don't think it's doing that but we'll see. Right, let's get all this back on. Again, with this here, one bolt, two bolt, three and four, that connects the underside of this. One, two, three, four. There is one sometimes under here as well, but that's never normally there. That's how easy these clocks are to get up. And unlike a lot of bikes, you can disconnect them and still start and stop the bike. Um, indicators at the back now work. The front, this side's not working. 
It seems as though when he took all the panels off and sprayed out, he didn't reconnect them properly. Hence the backlight is the next thing we're going to do with this little bit here. And I'm going to test the switch as well. So let's just give it a little rev up and see if she sort of changes up. Not so much smoke coming out now. There's that vibration you heard when it really got louder. That's the exhaust, it's on a spring system, so I'm going to have to tighten the springs up. Or I might have to tighten the back of the exhaust up, it seems wobbly, it needs to be tight. Um, didn't seem like it went up another gear. I mean, alright, that's on a stand, I've got to see what it's like on the road. As long as it gets 40 miles an hour, I'll be happy. Um, now check the rollers over again. Right, we need to do other little bits and bobs, but at least you hear it running and revving up. Uh, not so much smoke coming out of it as well. Drained out all the old 2T. Now, I just didn't know what he put in there. It could be top of the range stuff. I just didn't know. So I've drained all that out. That's not hard to do. And I just had a pot of this, so I've just put in Kestrel, um, good quality one. Um, Halfords do one. Um, it's good quality, you know. Don't use the lawnmower stuff. This sort of rubbish. I've done a video on what 2T oil to use and what damage it will do. Watch that. It's on my channel. Anyway, don't use this crap, it's for lawn mowers, not, not for high revving, high performance, eh. mopeds, scooters, speed fights, air boxes, DNAs, that sort of thing. Don't put it like this either. Now don't think, because I've got it started and running, that job's done. Very, very... I'll come back out in an hour's time or tomorrow morning and it'll still mess around again. So don't think you've fixed the problem. You do have to test and test again. I'll be happy, I'm gonna come out here later and start again. And then tomorrow morning I'll come out here and then tomorrow night I'll come out here. And once it's doing, I know it's a job done. Right, front panel off next and it's so, so simple. One, two, three, four. Sometimes they connect under here as well, but you can see this one wasn't. It really is as simple as that and it comes off in your hands. This is the headlight, just pull that little plug there. And job done, headlight off. Nice, it's got, it's got the back cover on it. Now, adjusting the headlights. Oh, good God. It just seems like every bolt was taken off this bike. Right, this is an MOT failure. Here's the headlights. Can you see that, up and down? You've got to have a spring in there and a bolt in there to push them up and down. It will fail the MOT, because the pattern's not on the uh, wall chart they use. So, glad I took that off. Just seemed like every bolt was taken off and put back on. Unless I just weren't there when the boy did it. Dunno. But, failure. These need connecting back on there properly. There's supposed to be a screw in there. There's a wood screw holding that in. There's little clips there, snapped. Snap this side, that's what holds all this bike up and together. If you're gonna have them snapped, then you should have connected these up to make sure it's all together. And the ignition. Gotta have a look in it. Oh, I guess because this isn't connected and it's all smashed, I guess that's why it looked like it was out of shape. Again, 16 years old, may have had nothing to do with the last owner, previous owners messed around, but you've got to correct all these mistakes, otherwise the whole bike's rattling away. And that's where you get vibrations which you don't want. So again, if you're gonna buy a bike, you don't know the history of it, go over every single nut and bolt. Yes, it may take you a little while. So worth doing, things will just drop off otherwise. This is just while I'm potting around. There's the back light seated properly. I'm gonna get a bolt put through there so it holds the support of the back as well. Indicators on properly. Air lock, you had it in the wrong way. It's a very simple mechanism there. And that's what it looks like inside. It has to catch on there and connect there. And then you get this mechanism which works well. Always test before you put the seat down. So, you push that down. And that will simulate the lock going down. And then you turn the key. So that's that. And there we go. That was snap, it's supposed to look like that. So you're gonna cut that down, bare wire it, and put it through properly. Open them panels down. 
indicated to cling best I can get them. I'm going to have to uh, put some hot glue on these and then get them screwed in properly because can't have them falling out. And the connectors are okay, bulbs are okay as well. I've tested them, they work. So, trying to stop my videos being two hours long, skipped along a little bit, just connected the back light, and where I put the spring, now it's adjustable, so in and out. So that means now, I'm 5'8", and I put it just above my kneecaps, about that much above my kneecaps. Um, if it fouls on that, it's easy just to four bolts and I'll readjust it. Before it had fouled, and it had been flashing around like, well, really badly, not good at all. So we're going to get that screwed in in a second. Um, sipping along, back is all back together again. Like that. That's what it should have done in the first place. Now originally in my first little bit I showed you the starter motor right at the beginning. The electrical connector that went on the starter motor, little clip bit here, it was too big, it was loose. So I've took that off, cut it and put an insulated one on there, which it should have been in the first place. And now it's starting. But it worried me a little bit. Now, I didn't show you, I've got a video on the kickstart mechanism. I've actually have connected that up. But where the hole that the shaft goes through is so loose, this is why the spring was loose in the first place. Now she kickstarts and electric starts. So peace of mind for me, just in case the um, relay did mess around again, I know that the person can still get home by kickstarting. So I'm going to put this back on. Now, I've said this many times before, you have to go over something again and again and again. The car, but I had to tell, have off twice. I've had the side cover off now. And this um, switch, this micro switch for the brake here. Again, it's not working. You know, and I've got it working fine. So I'm going to have to take it apart or replace it. I might I might have one. It'd be much easier to replace it. Just sprayed up and WD-40 dispension. It was stiff on one side. Knocked it back through. And now I have a shock that's working. Didn't need replacing after all. It was just the whole system got a little bit rusty. Um, what I did notice though is look. See the clocks here? There's like little row of screws around here that should be in there. So I'm going to get them sorted as well. Everything that's loose is no longer loose. The front end now, look at that. It's all on there. It is starting to look like a little ped. I've got a petrol all that. That was where the old sticker was for the oil plates. And I've sprayed all that up, cleaned that up. I'm gonna give it a bit of a lick and clean. This is now properly on. Let me investigate this exhaust. Look, see, there's springs in there. I know, but that should be tighter. So I might put a few washes in there and get it really tight in there. There's supposed to be some screws stopping it from rattling around. There's one there, but the other ones are missing. So we're gonna connect them. Before where the uh, indicator relay is. On the speed fight two, it's here. There's a speedo. We'll check that's working by spinning the wheel, make sure it goes round. Then the connectors. Still not need back to this again. I'll get to the bottom of it, if not replace it. So on a little bit of investigation, I'm seeing that this little micro switch is pissing me off. Anyway, when you see it this way, it's not working. But if you watch it and it clicks up, there's a gap there, then it works. But the moment it pushes back, listen, see that little click noise? So basically it's all screwed in there and the push brake is just pushing it back. It wouldn't work. So I thought I can jam it forward and then push something in there. And I'm thinking, where have I seen one? I've seen one, I've seen one, I've seen one. And then, <laughs> staring at me. I said I wouldn't throw away. So this, go in there. I'm actually gonna fix that. I'm gonna pull it all apart and refix it when I've got more time. But, let's unscrew this one. And let's see if this one works. I'm just clipping it in. Being it's off, turn the ignition on, and there, can you see the red light at the back? On and off, can you see that? Look at that. So, back tire time. I've got one hole for the bolt. While the tire's off, dry rag, wipe the inside of here. Brake dust, just get it out. Don't use any spirits or that, just a clean rag. I've got a lovely tire, but it's a front. So I'm gonna, Pop up there, get this tire taken off, and get this one put on. Can't be simpler. Two springs come off, back on again. A bit windy, so I'm not going to stay it here. I'm going to put the back wheel on again. Um, new brake shoes, front pads are really good. So suspension, front tires good. All I've got to do is change the rear tire now. Um, all electrics are working. Brakes, mirrors on there. I'm just going to give it a wash. And so there we have 
a lot of work gone into a bike on the inside rather than the exterior. Quick look, I'll take all this off again because the high beam light, which is now working, wasn't working. Indicators were done. And now we can see indicators working. And working. And high and low beam. that next pitch. So, job done. No longer loose. Ah, hot. Just a few decals. That's all in now. Let's kick start. Mirrors. That's a job done. Thank you so much. Please like, share, subscribe. If you don't like peds, I'm very sorry for this little video. If you do, then they said there's 70 odd on speed fights, lots of 4Ts, GY6 engines. I keep getting asked to work on them. I don't work on them because they just work or they don't work. And that's as simple as that. They're throwaway bikes. So much more fun working on a 2T bike, especially air cooled. Not a lot can go wrong that you can't fix. Water cooled, a lot of bits and bobs. SRs, 50s, ah oh dear. They've got an internal when they're um, water cooled. It's internal when that goes wrong. Yeah, and you've got a dietic engine and so on. Anyway, enough of that. Right, thank you so much. My winter bike is coming up next. What I chose, so check that one out. Uh, moped lovers, go from old videos. There is loads there for you to watch. And one running bike. Thank you so much. You take care of yourselves. I've had to compact this a little bit because YouTube don't like me um, over 40 minutes or something. I can't put, upload videos. So I've had to compact this a bit. So I did record. I've had to take out. So it looks a bit short. But the basics were there. And all this I've done on many, many bikes before and get asked questions on. You can just see. Not always does it work again and again and again. And the little bits. eventually found that that's what was on the starter motor that's way too big it should be half the size of that and it should be insulated anyway i've said goodbye haven't i <laughs> take care of yourselves